when a family living in a farmhouse on the North York Moors went to investigate a blockage in a septic tank they shared with the cottage next door, a grim discovery was made. Nestled in the earth beneath the tank was a bone, and not just any old animal bone. A medical professional among them immediately recognised it as a human jawbone. The police were called and a major inquiry swung into operation. Detectives swooped on Apple Tree Hearst Farm, just outside the isolated hamlet of Chopgate. Scene of crime tents were erected and forensic archaeologists rushed to the scene. Examination of the jawbone and a second one found nearby revealed that they predated 1950, while marks on the teeth indicated sophisticated dentistry, compatible with the RAF. Even the slightest toothache could become agony for anyone flying in an unpressurised aircraft at high altitude. So the RAF became pioneers of dentistry to keep their pilots in the air. The forensic team also found evidence of impact injuries on the bones and discoloration from contact with a helmet or a chin strap. It soon emerged that the remains were of two 22-year-old pilots that had crash-landed in the course of a secret mission in 1944. What rang alarm bells, however, was the bone fragments were found five miles from where the plane had gone down. More than 78 years after the crash, a coroner's court finally confirmed that everyone had long suspected. Detective Chief Inspector Carol Kirk from North Yorkshire Police and forensic archaeologist Dr Carl Harrison agreed that the bones were a secondary deposition. That is coroner speak for them having been moved from another place. That place was Bransdale, a valley on the moor south of Middlesbrough. It was there that the pilot officer Alfred Mill and warrant officer Eric Stubbs met their end on October the 11th, 1944. That morning they said farewell to their loved ones and boarded their Mosquito Bomber at RAF in Suffolk. Their mission was to transport a revolutionary new weapon designed by Dan Buster bomb creator Barnes Wallace to RAF Tunbury in Ayrshire. But halfway to Scotland, their Mosquito experienced catastrophic mechanical failure and plummeted to the ground. What elements of the shattered corpses could be retrieved from the crash site were subsequently buried in graves in Surrey. Unbeknown to the grieving families and RAF comrades, however, the recovery of their remains was by no means comprehensive and significant body parts remained at Bransdale long after the war had ended. And years later, in a gruesome act of disrespect to the war dead, someone pilfered them. What the coroner's court could not decide is how the body parts were moved or who had moved them. This despite the fact that Appletreehurst Farm and the derelict Appletreehurst Cottage, which sits on the estate, were formerly inhabited by Kenneth Ward, an obsessive military souvenir collector. Kenneth Ward, who was 75 years old, had dedicated his life to scouring Britain for World War II relics and his vast collection of military memorabilia was housed in a makeshift aircraft museum composed of tin sheds on the land surrounding his cottage. This included remnants of Rolls-Royce Merlin engines from Spitfires, which collided with another plane over Cleveland in 1940, and parts of German Junkers JU-88 twin-engine bombers, which crashed in Cleveland in 1944, an event witnessed as a child by the old farmer who lent war the JCB in which to dig it up. Other items are more personal, such as the frames of a pair of sunglasses and loose change from the wreck of a Spitfire crash in 1943. Alongside these are thousands of propellers, radios, parachutes and dinghies, but apart from being one of the UK's most fanatical collectors of wartime relics, Ward has exhibited bizarre behaviour on occasion. In 2011 he was sentenced to five years in prison for asking his next door neighbour. The court heard how he terrorised retired police officer Mandy Dunford for nine years in her isolated property, which was next to his in the heart of the moors. On one occasion, Ward appeared outside her home in the dead of winter, naked except for a pair of military boots and a rifle slung over his shoulder. At other times, he climbed ladders with his trousers down or watched her through binoculars. When police arrested him in 2010, 
They found a cache of weapons at his cottage, including a loaded Luger pistol under his pillow. And in his yard, an aircraft cockpit with fully functioning loaded guns. So Ward was an obsessive military hoarder and a convicted criminal, but do his misdeeds extend to bone collecting? Did he really transport the remains of two deceased war heroes, five miles, to his decrepit cottage to be a macabre addition to his collection? The area has witnessed hundreds of aircraft crashes over the years, including 14 in 1944 alone. This has made the moors a magnet for military collectors, salvagers, historians and enthusiasts. They scare the land with metal detectors and clipboards and document its wartime secrets. Ken Ward was bitten by the collector's bug at a young age, once telling a newspaper how he had been gathering aviation artefacts since the age of 11. He recalled how, in 1959, a school friend had taken him to see a crash site of a bomber which had come down in Moorland in Billsdale, less than four miles from where the mosquito crashed. It was foggy, he recalled, and we couldn't see very far. We were walking through the heather, not knowing where we were. We heard the sound of squeaking metal, and as we moved towards the sound, the tail plane of a Wellington, 20 foot high and complete with tail turret, loomed out of the fog. It was lying like a giant airfix kit. Its rudder was swinging in the wind and squeaking like a rusty gate. Ward then explained just how fascinating about military excavations. These were war machines hitting the ground at 400, 500 miles an hour, he said. Quite often, people were still in them. Our air recovery teams would try and retrieve any human remains, but sometimes personal effects were buried in the hole and it was filled in. Such discoveries bring you closer to the event and you know the last person to touch or hold that article was the owner. Milne and Stubbs mosquito crash formed a crater into which of the wreckage was subsequently placed by the people charged with clearing it up. The crash scene was covered with soil. It wasn't until 1969 that it was excavated by the now defunct Yorkshire Aircraft Preservation Society, which sent parts for restoration by specialist collectors and then local museums. A Yorkshire aircraft historian gave evidence that Ken Ward returned to the crash site at a much later date and did a further dig. William Fern of the South Yorkshire Aircraft Museum said Ward's magpie-like tendencies revealed themselves to the close-knit military salvaging community decades ago. The museum received a licence in the 1980s to recover a Wellington bomber on the North Yorkshire Moors. Several members went up to do reconnaissance, he recalled, and somehow Mr Ward tagged along. They did the reconnaissance and came down because a helicopter was needed to lift it off the moors. But when they went back the next day, a very rare dustbin turret from a particular aircraft had disappeared. The turret is so rare, it's the only one that they've ever heard of, or let alone seen. Eventually, Mr Ward had a dustbin turret in his collection. In 1999, the Ministry of Defence gave Ward an informal warning over his possession of a pendant believed to have belonged to a Canadian airman who died in a crash in East Yorkshire during the war. The suspected date of the pendant offence was 1982, four years before the Protection of the Military Remains Act was passed. Throughout the 1990s and 2000s, Ward became an established collector, loaning pieces to museums, buying parts from the RAF and restoring what he could to get his hands on. But the story of his home life was one of sadness and squalor. Local newspapers reported in 2004, when Ward was 57, his brother, Brian, 65, and his mother, Muriel, 87, were living in Victorian conditions in Appletreehurst Farm. The council had condemned it as unfit for human habitation and ordered the owners of Sion Hall, the stately home down the road, to pay to fix it. Ward was the main carer for his ill mother, who had suffered five strokes and had only one kidney and the family lived among rotting woodwork and slug-infested kitchen, with only a portable tin bath to bathe in. After his mother and brother passed away, Ward continued to live alone in the squalid cottage. It was at this point, he began his campaign of terror against his new neighbour, Mandy Durford. 
After buying her Studsdale property and moving in alone, she watched in dismay as Wood converted part of her land into a ramshackle air museum. Even after he'd been jailed for stalking and firearms offences, she lived in terror that he would be allowed to return to Appletreehurst Cottage upon his release. It was thanks to the intervention of her local MP, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, that restraining order was obtained to prevent him from doing so. Ward moved instead to a caravan park in Sutton on the Forest, near York, and police cleared his field of junk. Miss Dunford said the bones must have been buried long before she came to live here. Ward has left one of his static caravans in an isolated country lane. A neighbour say he was evicted and his van confiscated by police 18 months before, after the bomb squad was called in to deal with live ordnance inside the caravan. It was terrifying to think what might have happened. A resident said he had so many live rounds of ammunition, the police bomb squad were there for three days. They used a bomb disposal robot as well. After he left Chopgate, Ward was said to make frequent trips to France for more wartime excavations. You would see him carrying stuff out of his car into the caravan, said a neighbour. He was often working on things with a metal grinder. Police forced Ward from the site, but have not kept tabs on his whereabouts. Neighbours speculated he had gone back to the woods of the wild North York Moors, but no one has ever seen or heard from him since. Ward has been arrested for the discovery of the bones in 2020, but has been released without charge. North Yorkshire Police said in its investigation they concluded that the Crown Prosecution Service had determined there was not enough evidence to warrant a prosecution. For his part, Ward has always denied being connected to the airman's remains. The authorities are no further forward, except that they've wasted a fortune in taxpayers' money, he said. He has heard the investigation has cost up to a million pounds. They were looking for memorabilia, they thought was buried in fields for some reason, but they found nothing. They raided my home, took a lot of items away, and they haven't returned any of them. I was forced to move away, and my life was turned upside down. Meanwhile, in reaching conclusion of the accidental death of the inquest into Milne and Stubbs, the Mosquito pilots, North Yorkshire coroner Richard Watson said, it's 77 years since the end of the Second World War and 78 years since the incident. This year would have been Sergeant Stubbs' centennial, and P.O. Milne's would have been last year. This is a timely reminder to us all how young men who made the supreme sacrifice and forever who lawfully removed their bones is also a reminder of the importance of the respect for the dead. <laughs>